Five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this somewhat overcast Wednesday. It's, it's funny. It, it looks overcast, but it's as bright and sunny as, as, as if it wasn't overcast. I guess there's yeah. a big hole somewhere right in the line of the sunlight. <laughs> yeah, because it is raining out there. Is it really? Yeah, you can see it in the puddles. It's one of the sun showers. It's a per- perfect, uh, perfect combination for a rainbow, right? If, if you're yes. a rainbow lover. Last, last, uh, last night I was watching a video on YouTube of... Um, Jimmy Fallon returning to the Tonight Show. You know, he fell in his kitchen and almost tore off one of his fingers. Yeah, his his uh, his uh, ring, his wedding ring, I guess, got caught on something. And so while he he was in ICU, I think for ten days. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? Who knew? I didn't know. But anyway, so he's he's talking about what he did for ten days while he was in the hospital with a, with a finger injury. He almost lost his finger. He had microsurgery to mm-hmm. fix it. Oh, anyway, so he's reading this book, and he's talking about this book he read about the meaning of life. And, and he shows the book, and I can't remember the title or the author, but I guess he was greatly impressed by what it said, and it sounded like what it said was that, you know, what you're doing right now is what you're meant to do, whatever it is that you're doing. And so w- whenever I read a biography or a memoir I'm always I, I've always thought this I've always thought isn't it interesting how a person's life unfolds Is, isn't it interesting how as long as we just keep doing what we've got to do and keep following something that drives us mm-hmm. we end up at, at the end of the whole thing not the not that a memoir is always written at the end of the whole thing, but we end up at some time looking back and saying, "Wow, what a pe- what a ride I was just on," yeah. and, and and it's and it's not indiv- there's not one person who's left out of this. We're all in on this. It's an amazing thing. Uh, we just got finished looking at a book called "Matters of Life and Data." Interesting title. It is a memoir written by our guest Charles D. Morgan. This is, according to the cover, the remarkable journey of a big data visionary whose work impacted millions, including me. It says you on the book, but I know it means me. Uh, and uh, Charles is, uh, gosh, also, listen to this, a gadget geek. He has driven his own race cars in a professional career that includes victories at 12 hours of Sebring and the 24 hours of Daytona. For you NASCAR fans, you're jealous right now, aren't you? Uh, Charles Morgan, go in, Charles. Hey, good morning. How are you all? Pretty good. Where, where are you right now? Well, I'm in beautiful downtown Little Rock, Arkansas, overlooking the Clinton Presidential Library. How is that? That sounds all right. Uh, I'm on the night. I'm on the 19th floor in my uh, condo office. Oh, so you still you're not retired? No, I'm not at all retired. Actually, I'm the CEO of a tech startup now, and we have a small mobile application solution business that creates call solutions for people who want to block calls, file complaints against bad guys, and get information about whoever just called them so it's a caller id and so we have a number of calling solutions and, and uh we have 50 employees a nice uh, it's a lot it's actually a lot you can actually manage a company with 50 people <laughs> when i left Axie and retired i thought i was going to retire we had about 6500 people when you're wow. the ceo of a company that large you just heard it you heard it you say you, you try to move them in a direction and there's always so much managing you can do. All you could do is lead, and that's one of the things I actually learned during my 35-year career there. So what I what I want to know is, did I get from the book what you wanted me to get from the book? And and here's so let me explain to you what I got. What I got from the book is confirmation that I have a purpose. I don't I don't know much about data. <laughs> Except that I use it, mm-hmm. um, but but the book gives me confirmation that okay, what I'm doing is a small part of, of a bigger picture, and I'm meant to be doing this. And and it and it sounds like you came to that realization at one point yourself. You know I, I, what you say is uh, I give me a few cold chills right now because I actually never thought about my life that way, but. I, you know, I knew what I liked to do and the things I wanted to do, and this does seem like what I should be doing or what I was meant to be, which I know that's kind of esoteric and, and nutty, but I, I agree with you. I think you end up there somehow or other. But is that what you wanted the book to do? And, and I mean, the book is, is great. Well, I want- the book is great for your grandchildren, but did you ever in a million years expect that it was actually going to have an influence on a, on a radio guy 
uh, a thousand miles away. <laughs> no, I actually did. Uh, I, I actually did not. It, but it was it was quite an experience writing it. And I, you know, when you write a book for the first time, and it's it's a lot harder than I envisioned it might be. And I, even though I had help doing it, but it. it you examine yourself and your past in ways you never thought about. And I think part of the realization that you're talking about right now is part of the concept that came out of this. And if I look back at my early life uh, and some of the things that I did, I had no idea I would run a big company. No clue. I didn't even want to. It was not even in my concept. But uh, I actually had, I thought about this the other day. I had a young man. When I was a senior in high school, he said, Charles, when when you run a big company and a real successful, would you hire me? And I said, Pete, it was because kind of I said, what are you talking about? I'm going to run a big company. He said, oh, guess you are. We'll run a big company. Wow. I, I don't mind. I never forgot that. I said, and, you know, I never hired him. I don't even know what happened to that guy, but I still – remember that to this day he was so sure that i would run a big company he said i know you are there's no question about it and 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 that was one of the last times i ever saw Pete. isn't Hope that amazing that's an amazing story uh, since since you're involved with the big data companies have your companies ever been uh subpoenaed by people in the uh, uh court to uh testify against or for somebody uh, well, we've had we had two data breaches, and 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 in both cases the perpetrator went to jail. And uh, you know, from those data breaches, we managed to significantly enhance and tighten the you know security process and procedures at Axiom. And you know, since about 2000, Axiom and in the last 15 years has not had another data breach because of some of the work we did around 2000 but uh we we actually were you know obviously involved around uh the 9-11 uh uh disaster and tragedy and we helped we were subpoenaed by the department of justice and uh we had involved with the fbi to try to track down some of the bad guys and so that that was an interesting twist that I do talk about in the book. Uh, it was an interlude uh, after 2001 that, uh, you know, created a, a lot of folklore and axiom. Wow. Wow. Good. That is, that is so amazing. So, so I always look to, to guys like you when I hear about hacks. I always say to myself, okay, so the hacks are are trying to do bad things but i know there's somebody out there who can outthink and outsmart the hack so i'm 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 going to be fine my money in my bank is going to be safe because there is somebody out there like yourself who knows how to outthink the the bad guys is that is that a constant struggle so i got a question for you do you have an android phone or, do, an, or do, an Apple. Do I, Robin? What do I have? I don't even know what I have. No, uh-uh. I have a track phone, whatever yeah, that is. Yeah, we don't have either one of those. <laughs> a track phone? Oh, that's, well, it's, it's, it runs Android, but anyhow, uh, do you have a flashlight app on your phone? Flashlight app. No, I do not. Flashlight app. Oh, well, you're really behind the time. <laughs> yeah. <don't> <laughs> we are. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a Kindle. I have a Kindle, and I flip it open to see if my dog All is right. still breathing. <laughs> All right, well, that's hey, You're not as far behind as I thought. But, uh, the, point, the, point, the point I was going to make is that there are a lot of ways that people are stealing information, and if you're not constantly aware and it and, and takes some personal responsibility to try to find out uh, who the good, good guys and bad guys are. Flashlight apps are, are notorious for stealing information. I actually did an interview earlier today and I had to, uh, and I said this to the guy that actually came up uh, uh, quite by accident and I said, open up your your smartphone and check your applications and see what your flashlight app permissions are and he did and he went oh my god it has all these permissions and it's got 22 million bytes of data for a flashlight app i said yeah because they're stealing your data so 
<laughs> oh, oh my goodness. God. Well, well, maybe I'm better off being uh, behind the times. I think you are. I mean, being <laughs> way in the past is the same place to be. Hey, if you use an all cash, you know, every single credit card transaction, uh, you know, you're almost safer if you don't have a bank account. Don't ever have any charge cards. Uh, and, you know, uh, or be sure that your car and your television are not one of these new ones that's collecting data. Uh, get an old car, an old TV, and you're in good shape. <laughs> All right, uh, let's take a little break. Charles D. Morgan is our guest, and uh, we're talking about his book, Matters of Life and Data. And you are in Arkansas. What was the city you're in again? I know you're near the Clinton Library. What city is that? Little Rock. Little Rock. I'm, I'm Little Rock, uh, right. Pebble City, as we call it. Okay, so let's take a little break. We'll be right back. Charles D. Morgan is our guest, and we will be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It'll be partly sunny today with a thunderstorm around during the afternoon and evening hours. Today's high 88 to 92. Partly cloudy overnight, though 74 to 78. For tomorrow, sun mixing with clouds with a couple of thunderstorms around mainly during the afternoon and evening hours, the high 88 to 92. And for Friday, more clouds and sun with a couple of thunderstorms in the area, the high 87 to 91. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, this is Becky at Hello, Gorgeous Salon. We are located in the heart of downtown Ocala, right next to the historic Marion Theater. I'd like to invite you to stop by and see our new boutique area and meet our staff of professional stylists. Here at Hello Gorgeous, we are ready to update your look with the latest trends. It's the perfect time to brighten up your look. So make your appointment now for those highlights and Brazilian blowout. But don't stop there. We are a full service salon offering manicures, pedicures, and facials also. So if you've been searching for a salon to call your own, come and see us at Hello Gorgeous Salon. We are located at 48 South Magnolia Avenue in downtown Ocala, right next to the Marion Theater. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon at 351-5358. That's 351-5358. And don't forget, we also do men and children's cuts too. 351-5358. Hello Gorgeous. Come join New Mail Medical for their town hall at Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane. Tuesday, July 21st, and Wednesday, July 22nd, from 4 to 6 p.m. Join renowned expert Dr. Christopher Asandra and get your questions answered. He will be discussing the importance of hormonal replacements and common misconceptions for men and women, as well as the importance of sexual health and anti-aging. Now, dinner and refreshments will be provided for those in attendance, along with door raffles and giveaways. But seating is limited, so please call today to reserve your space at the Golden Corral in the Villages on Wedgwood Lane. Call today, 404-4779. That's 404-4779. One more time, 404-4779. And make plans to join New Mail Medical. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozenet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. All right, 19 minutes after 10 o'clock. If you want to read an interesting memoir, read this book called Matters of Life and Data by Charles D. Morgan. Uh, it is so filled with things. And and to be honest with you, Robert and I are just kind of fascinated with the man and, and his accomplishments haven't really come up yet. So let's kind of focus on that a little bit. Uh, Charles, thank you for being on the air with us. You know what I wondered about? I, I wondered about this. When, when a father and a son or a mother and a daughter or, or a mother and a son, it could be, it doesn't have to be gender specific, but when a child is looking at his parents and, and somehow being influenced and, and is going to s sort of follow in his parents' shoes, if, it's, if you're raising horses, the child is going to raise horses. There's going to be some similarities, a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. The world has changed so much that your dad couldn't have possibly been involved in data in the same way you are. What, what did your dad do? What was his job? 
Well, my father uh, was a traveling salesman of all things. He he was he worked for Rice Sticks Dry Goods out of St. Louis, and he sold cloth goods. And he traveled all over uh, the Mid South and sold to you know department stores and people like that. So he absolutely he was he was a salesman, but he was also a serial entrepreneur. And I think he do. There's something genetic about that. I don't know what it is, but I I I caught my father's disease, even though I'm I'm not sure I had exactly the same inclination. Uh, I wasn't a salesman; I was more of an engineer. But I still had the chronic uh, disease. He liked to play golf. I didn't play golf. I liked to I like cars. He could care less about cars. You know, it was like we were very different. But you're but the entrepreneur is your disease. Is that what you what. That's what you mean? I, I absolutely, and I think that is something that is almost genetic, and I don't really understand it, but I do believe that there's something in the the genealogy of a person that makes an entrepreneur. It makes you more of a risk taker, and uh, you you like. I, I'm not. I was never afraid of trying new things. You know, I. Uh, you know, I was not afraid to drive race cars. I was cautious, but I wasn't afraid to try it. I wow. learned how late in life to fly jet airplanes, which is kind of something different for a guy. So you fly the you have a cor- I, I know in the book you have a corporate jet, and you do you fly it? Do you pilot it? I was I was the left seat. Uh, I was a type rated jet pilot. I was type rated three different jets. Wow! And, so I could be pilot in command in, in one Falcon or two Falcon uh, jet, different Falcon jets and a Citation 500s. Wow. So yeah, I, I did a little bit of all that stuff. A little, you know, I don't know what it is. You know, I like new stuff. I like to try things. And our current company is Privacy Star. We're in the mobile solutions business. And of course, anything that has to do with software uh, or data, I love it. So, do you know even but 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 here's the here's the promise and and the uh, and the the contrary part of this the promise is that with the data we don't have to fly to New York anymore for these meetings but we still do so I guess traveling is part of what yeah. we we just like doing that do you think? Well, I also think it's very hard over a, a video connection to get the whole sense of a person in the body language. You know, you spend a few hours with somebody in person, and you, there's a more of a connection than there is. I, we always say in, in our business, if you've got a really important meeting, don't try to do it by phone or video. And, and here we are in Arkansas, and we had uh, five people in Seattle meeting with AT&T folks yesterday. And obviously, they have good telecommunications, but we did our meeting in person. And we like to do important meetings in person. How did you manage to get your employees in 1976 to take a 50% cut in pay because the company was in dire need? Yeah. You didn't want to lose your employees. And at the same time, they must have taken that. That must have been a hard pill to swallow. But if they did it, which it sounds like they did, Mm -hmm. you must have been loved. There must have been some kind of a relationship between you and them that was outstanding, different than you might have imagined in most companies. Well, we had a very uh, strong team, a lot of mutual trust. A number of these guys I'd worked with for a long time. I worked with at IBM, and, and one of them was a very close college friend of mine. And so it's it's almost like they knew that we had no way to survive until we got this new customer installed. And, I, you know, I, there was no way to make the payroll. Uh, you know, our cash just wouldn't support it. We, we didn't have any other sources of money. That you know, in in, in 2015, you'd you'd be in Silicon Valley and run out and raise another round. We didn't have a round to raise. There was no available source of cash. And when I went to the people with this proposition that their pay was going to be cut in half, I said, "All I can tell you is I'll I'll make it up to you, and I'll make it up to you. Uh, Two dollars uh, return to you for every dollar you gave up, assuming we make it." Uh, and also, 
uh, I will I will be very very sure that when we have a chance that we will all uh, share in the the stock and the ownership of this company. So it's like you build a trust, you build strength and and, and trust and. In the end, these guys uh, and gal, we had one 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 uh, woman at the time in their top six, and we believed in each other, and we proceeded to do something. In the case of at least one or two of the people, it was very very hard. They barely had enough savings to get through that period and still feed the family. Wow! And, and how long did it take before you were able to turn it all around? About six months, we started. We were able to put people back on full salary in about six months, and uh, within 12 months after that, they had their money back. And, and believe it or not, I didn't actually even have control of the company at that time. I was I was CEO, but I had about 40% of the stock. The guy who had control of the company <clears throat> was the CEO of a bus company. And they were on the verge of bankruptcy at the time, so they didn't have any money. Ultimately, I got uh, a chance to own about 90% of the stock, but I gave almost 40% of the stock to those guys who had given up their salary as well as all the rest of the people who worked there. Wow. Uh, we, when we talk about laws that govern um, data and, and, and the new world that we live in, are, uh, two questions about that. Are, are the laws behind the times? Ha- have we not kept up with technology regarding the laws? And even if we had very effective laws protecting us, wouldn't we still be at the, at the risk of two groups of people, people who don't live here in this country and people who don't care about the laws who do live here? <laughs> Well, uh, virtually all the all the breaches and all the misuse we have are against the law. We're we're really the laws. While yes, we might need you know laws who are more, which are more current and more able to change with the times. The problem really is the bad guy, and we do not have a set of standards and protection. Who in the world controls uh, internet security in this in the world? Nobody. Mm, right. And it's still internet, still the wild wild west. And even though you have processes and procedures, the Office of Personnel Management, the the guys who had more government data, important government data than anybody else, had everything that they had stolen. Everything, all of the information about the government employees, government contractors, right. government families, right. uh, uh, associate, associates of, of our secure, of the FBI and CIA, you know, families. It's crazy. I mean, they stole everything. It is and crazy. It, even, it, even though there are certainly laws to stop that, people are going to break the law. In this case, it was probably China. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, what a great conversation. The book is called Matters of Life and Data. It is written by Charles D. Morgan. I have a hardcover copy of the book that I'd like to give away right now, so call me if you want the book. It's the number is 622-9622. Charles, do you want to leave us with a website, uh, how, or how do we get the book? Yeah. Well, uh, there are a couple of ways. Uh, one, we do have a, a website, mattersoflifeanddata.com, all one word, just like it's it sounds, but you can also get it on Amazon. A number of bookstores have it. Uh, all the all the book retailers, the uh, online retailers, have got the book. Uh, you can get electronic hard co- hard cover or soft cover versions of it. So uh, it's it's readily available in the market uh, today. All right. So our website we. Can- we have it on the website, uh, autograph copy. Okay, and that's mattersoflifeanddata.com. Data. Correct. Uh, Charles, thank you for being on the air with us. Uh, you've lived a fascinating life. If, if I ever get a chance, uh, I wouldn't mind riding in that corporate jet. That sounds no. cool. <laughs> <laughs> that, thank you, Charles. Well, I, I've actually got, I've got a private jet now. Fox News Radio. I'm Julian Wu. The defendant's fate in the movie theater massacre in Colorado now in the hands of the jury. In his closing argument, defense attorney Dan King said James Holmes was mentally ill. All the experts agreed on the schizophrenia spectrum, and he had a delusional belief that killing people would increase his own value or